Hello everybody out there on YouTube, it's 43 eyes and today I am here bringing you a, another Minecraft video. I haven't made a Minecraft video in a while, but uh, recently in school I was assigned a project called Math is Everywhere, and uh, I needed to either create a video or uh, enter the science fair with my project, and I don't like doing science fairs. So I'm making a video, and you guys get to see it, because I don't know where else to upload it but my YouTube channel. But the, essen the, the essential idea behind Math is Everywhere is to choose a topic and or hobby you are interested in and show and demonstrate in what way uh, math is involved. And uh, I chose Minecraft because it's what my YouTube channel uh, has been based off of for years, and uh, as you guys may know, there is my there's math uh, practically everywhere in Minecraft. So I've just I have a few exhibits, if you will, that I set up um, to show the different aspects of math uh, in Minecraft. Now, the first one I'd like to mention is the overwhelmingly amount of uh, references to powers of two. What I mean by that is numbers like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, all those kind of numbers. Um, the numbers that are the basis of binary and uh, have a lot of special properties, and which is why computing and programming uses them uh, a lot in many various ways. So the first reference here is any block in Minecraft you will find is uh, 16 blocks by 16 block. I mean 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Um, what what this means is uh, these little pixels that make up the texture. There are 16 uh, across and 16 up and down on each block. That uh, that helps with programming and like formatting textures because it, it's dealing with these awesome numbers that c computers can just deal with just like that because they're they're it's core mechanics what it runs off of let me set the time today here oh not Faye. okay uh, the next thing I want to mention it's another power of two is coal the, this resource you mine underground uh, does exactly eight jobs in a furnace and as we know it's a power of two so 16 like that block. So uh, as you can see, I'll speed it up here and you'll see that it's exactly eight jobs. <coughs> yep, there you go, see? Eight iron, and um, this fire ran out here, so you know that the fuel ran out. So it's exactly eight jobs, which is good if you need to process a mass amount of ores, and numbers like eight and 16 are really easy to work with to figure out how much coal you need to put in each furnace. And it just splits evenly, and it's, 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 it, it's just cool. Uh, another thing is that uh, there are various items in Minecraft. Um, uh, these are the max stack you can have of each item, meaning that if I got another piece of stone right now, it would create a new stack because uh, I already have the maximum number of stone in one stack in my inventory right now, which is 64 on most blocks. Almost all blocks in the game stack up to 64. Some rare items like eggs and snowballs stack to 16, but... Um, it's still uh, one of those powers of two. And some items don't stack at all. Which is not a reference to Power of Two, but I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, and the next thing I want to mention is the dimensions on the players. Uh, I don't can't exactly spawn a player, but uh, I can spawn a zombie, which is has the same dimensions as a player, but he's just holding his arms out. So it's the best representation I could get you. Uh, so with the uh, zombie, hold on, it's raining. With the zombie, um, his head. The head of the zombie and player is uh, 8 pixels by 8 pixels, which is cool. The body is 12, pixel, the 12 pixels by 8 pixels, and the legs are 12 pixels by 8 pixels. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, 12 is not a power of 2. 
that's right, but it's still a good even number, and um, the body plus the legs is 24, and the body plus the legs plus the head is 32. So the body itself, yes, is 12 pixels, which is not a power of 2, but the entire the entirety of the height of the uh, entire model is 32 pixels. And then uh, I guess the only thing on here, which is not a power of 2, is the arms, because... Uh, they're not a part of anything. They're just 12 pixels long, but they had to match the body. I don't know. There's just lots of dimensions in the player model, which um, uh, which are references to powers of two. And the last reference, well, not the last reference, but a last example I'm showing of a power of two is what you see outlined here is a chunk in the game. Now, a chunk in Minecraft is basically uh, what the game uses to process different events going on. And so, say, if I had a furnace in this chunk right now, and uh, each chunk is 16 blocks by 16 blocks, that's the power of two reference. If I had a furnace smelting something in here and I went away far enough for that chunk not to be loaded, the furnace would just stop smelting it because the chunk, each chunk is how the world loads. The world loads in chunks. It does not load the uh, wor uh, blocks individually. Just the chunks. That's getting, get, getting into core mechanics of Minecraft. Not really math, but, you know, there are 16 blocks by 16 blocks, so I just thought I'd mention them. Okay, now let, uh, I'm going to get into uh, different scenarios you might use uh, geometry in math. I mean, in Minecraft, not math. Um, here's a very simple example. You need to fill in this floor. I have a 10 by 10 square here, and if you want to fill in the area of this, the area is 30. Um, the area is uh, 64... Uh, blocks because this this uh, the the interior is eight by eight. This outer ring here is ten by ten, but you have to subtract these blocks on the border. So really, the interior is eight by eight. So um, one two three four five six seven eight. One two three four five six seven eight. And the uh, way to find the area of a square is eight times eight, which uh, you know equals sixty four, which is a Another reference to Powers of Two, but it's not got anything to do with Minecraft, just how I built this. But yeah, you would need exactly a stack of items to fill in, a stack of any given block to fill in the uh, area of this shape. And uh, sometimes you need to do math like that to figure stuff out. And here's a little bit more complex math. Let me get some black wool. I set up a little uh, coordinate grid here, um, and these black wool, these are points. So each block is a unit, I guess you could say, and here, the bottom left corner is point A, 0, 0, and B, 8, 12. Now, say I want to uh, produce a diagonal between these two blocks for, say, a triangle or something, but... Uh, it's kind of difficult because these are blocks and it's not exactly easy to figure out what how to diagonal your way up there. It's kind of kind of difficult. So if you use your geometry knowledge and apply the slope uh, the slope formula, which is uh, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Um, you can find the slope uh, between these two points and uh, place the blocks accordingly. Uh, this is 0, 0, and 8, 12, and if you do the math, the slope is 3 halves, which is rise 3, run 2. So if we go up 3 blocks here, 1, 2, 3, over 2, 1, 2. Uh, there's the first block, and you just keep doing that. 1, 2, 3, 1, th 1 2. One two three one two, and one one two three one two, and uh, yeah, the slope worked out. You see, it goes up perfectly straight to the block. Uh, 
if you want to make a diagonal line, you would probably just fill in the gaps like this. And there you go. You have your line. Works perfectly. Okay, now into the juicy stuff. Redstone. Oh, this is going to take some explaining. Okay, redstone um, is a substance in the game which, when activated by levers, buttons, or uh, redstone torches, can either be off or on. Off or on. That right there is the basis of the inner workings of your computer or any other type of computing device you have. There are tiny little wires inside which are either on or off and that they go through their tiny little processors that process usually one or two inputs and give an output based on what those one or two inputs are and a bunch of those tiny little processors make up the big processor um, it's hard to explain but here uh, redstone activates things like lamps in the game for instance I'm gonna be using lamps for most of my uh, examples in here so when uh, the redstone signal is on, it will turn on, a, it will open a door, turn on a lamp, open a trap door, and, or push a piston. This here is a demonstration showing how redstone can be carried through one block. So this block here, as you can see, this thing is not touching the redstone, but it's uh, the lamp still getting powered because the redstone signal is being carried through one block. It's hard to understand, but uh, any redstone signal, if it's going directly into the block, can be carried on through the block for one block. Uh, so, yeah. It will not work for two blocks through, though. As, I, yeah, as, I, as I'm about to demonstrate here. So, if I get a lamp, it won't turn on. So, yeah. And this here is a redstone torch. A redstone torch is basically just an infinite source of onness for the redstone. So uh, as long as this redstone torch is there, it will always be on. Now here's where uh, the mechanics for actually being able to do something with the redstone come in. Redstone has this amazing property where if there is a redstone torch connected directly to a block which is being powered by redstone, it will shut off. Now this opens up so many possibilities. This little mechanic right here makes millions of things possible. On, off, on, off. See, the redstone's on, but it's powering a block, which the torch is on, so the torch turns off. And this is good because you can invert redstone pretty much and that opens up the possibility for an AND gate which is a uh, logic in the real world computing in the real world which um, allows you to build computers and microchips uh, out of AND gates, NOT gates, ZOR gates and stuff like that so here's uh, an AND gate an AND gate uh, is if both the inputs are on the output is on, but if both of them are off, the output's off. If um, both, if one of them's on, one of them's off. The output's off. If one of them's off, the other one's on. The output's off. So the output's only on if both the inputs are on, like this. See, I, it's kind of hard to explain how it works, but basically, this powers the block, turns off this torch, but this torch is still powering this, which is powering this block, keeping this torch off. The other way around, same thing. If they're both off, they're both powering it. But only if the torches are both off will this be on and will the lamp be powered. Um, now this, uh, this essence of on and offness is the core mechanics behind binary. I'll, I'll elaborate. So as you see here, imagine, okay, there's eight, there's eight, there's eight wires that could be on or off. Each wire represents a number. And this is where the powers of two come in. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And these numbers um, 
at oh hello skeleton interrupting my video these numbers added up into um any comp okay so these numbers can be add can be added in a bunch of combinations one plus four two plus sixteen eight plus sixty four and all those combinations out of all the combinations that you could add uh add two of the numbers or one or two or more of the numbers um can equal any number you want any number uh specifically with uh an 8 bit system it can go up to uh i think it's 255 yeah so with 8 with 8 bits pretty much with 8 on and with 8 wires that can be on and off and each wire representing um a number doubled by the last number each each combination um, within all the combinations uh, you can make any number up to 255 this is really hard to explain and it it it's uh, pretty tricky but I'll explain uh, one say I want to make the number one I can add the number one there you go that's but one zero 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 is binary for one uh, so I want to make 24 um that would be 16 plus 8 like that 16 plus 8 and uh 16 plus 8 as we all know equals 24 so 8 bit binary for the number 24 could be translated into 00011000 and um you might have already guessed but if we light them all up that equals 255. You can use this mechanic of binary and uh, on and offness to make calculators, machines, combination locks, anything that requires thinking uh, within the engine of Minecraft, which I find extremely fascinating, and it involves a lot of math, which is why I'm including it for my Math is Everywhere project. And, let me set the time today, I made, for the purpose of this video, what I call the binary translator. I know, uh, very creative name, right? It basically takes binary you input into it and uh, displays which number is the output. So I have numbers 1 through 15 going up here. And each the light of which number corresponds to the answer you give it will light up. So uh, I'll try to explain how it works after I demonstrate it. So this is only a four-bit system, so it can only uh, show it can only uh, compute numbers up to fifteen. Uh, basically, that means there are sixteen different combinations for the switches. Uh, including zero, so it can only go up to 15. So, as we see here, uh, we can uh, do number one. See, it worked one. Uh, let's let's see what's the number number we could do. Okay, so this is one, this is two, this is four, this is eight. So let's do nine. Eight. One. One plus eight is nine. Come up here. We get nine. Uh, we could do 10, or 11, 9 and 2. Uh, wait, what? Oh yeah, that's 8 and 2. So we get 10. If we want to do 11, we could just add 1, like that, and we get 11. This will display every binary number from 1 to 15. Uh, how it works is, uh, I have the input here going into this bus and it just goes up and up and up there's 15 or 16 different uh, rows so that uh, it can uh, have okay here there's 16 different rows and four columns for each row so each, each, basically, 
row, each one of these, each, each column, I don't know if it's a row or a column, one, each of the 15 different uh, rows has a unique set of uh, four torches that I have placed to invert and keep the signal as it is. And it, it's basically all a giant AND gate. It's hard to explain, but... Uh, each one of these rows has an AND gate, which will only activate if and only if um, its binary uh, number is imported. So each one of these... Each one of these 16 things has a has a unique way it handles an input, and uh, if the AND gate happens to be triggered, like this one is, because this comes in, the torch is off, these signals are left as they are, they're not invor er, inverted, well that one is, uh, keeping this entire line off, which does not activate this block, which makes sure this torch turns on and comes over here and voila, the button lights up, your answer's five. Uh, you probably had no idea what that meant. But that's my Math is Everywhere project. I uh, hope you liked it, everybody, especially my teacher. I know you're watching. And uh, hope you enjoyed. It, it took me a while to build that thing. Took a lot of thinking. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next video. Later.